Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. This is the Locala Podcast. I'm Lisa Anderson, your host for today and also the guest. We're going to be doing a little bit of vlogging today and asking me some questions about who I am and where I come from. So let's go ahead and dive in. So I grew up in Ashland, Wisconsin, which is a small little town of about, I believe, 8,200 people, if I remember correctly. And um, I grew up on a 400 acre seed farm. We harvested primarily bird's foot trefoil, which is used for uh, erosion on the ground. It's often used in uh, pastures as well. That was what we primarily did. We did have some beef cattle for a while. We had some rabbits. Uh, we had some chickens when I was really little. Uh, but I did a lot of redneck country things. I ran around the woods with bare feet. I uh, used uh, squirrel tails for Barbie stoles. I, you know, I did some hunting. I was never big on actually doing the hunting bit. But um, you know, all of the farm stuff that that you would do. I drove tractor. We lived about 20 minutes outside of town. And that's how we measure in uh, the Midwest. We measure by time. We lived well out into the country and, you know, we just I had dirt roads and we rode bikes and we played hard and did all of the, the country things. So I wound up down in uh, Ocala, Florida in 2009. My parents had gotten a divorce uh, when I was about 29 years old and uh, my dad had an online hobby business and I had been working uh, several jobs uh, in the area and healthcare. I'd been in the healthcare industry for a number of years. I had started out that way. Um, I had become a certified nursing assistant my senior year of high school. I had taken night classes for that. Um, and the recession was hit pretty hard. I was a massage therapist at the time. And I went from um, a booking out about four months in advance to barely having one and just trying to do whatever I was doing home health care. I had multiple jobs just trying to survive. And my dad said, hey, I have, you know, my ho online hobby business. I'm moving to Florida. Would you like to come down? I'll help you move. Come on down and manage my business for me from your home. And so uh, long before working from home was fashionable, I was working from home. My dad had an online uh hobby business that was for RC model airplanes and all the parts and it was uh, kind of one of its first kind because this was before Amazon was really popular and so you couldn't get everything that you needed in one location at that point so his website was kind of um, cutting edge for that hobby at that time and then I wound up going back to school um, when I was 30 and um, and, and going for graphic design so that kind of you know starts bringing us up, back up to date a little bit on where I came from. So I would say that my upbringing was, uh, I lived a very secure and um, charming life as a child. I was very fortunate um, and I lived in an imagination world and I was very naive to the outside world and problems. I would say that that uh, security and that uh, naivete was uh, both a blessing and a bit of a curse because I believe it helped me to just see people as people and to be loved and not to be touched by uh, this hatred of, of people. I just took them as they were. And, um, and in a lot of other aspects of my life, I, I feel like that was, um, shaped me really well. However, on the, um, opposite spectrum, it also, uh, did not prepare me well enough for things that I would encounter. I didn't have a lot of confidence in myself. I was not ready for things like bad relationships or anything like that. I, I, you know, I saw Disney princesses and old time movies and all of that kind of stuff. I think it, it, it was both a blessing and a curse. When I was working for my dad, um, I knew that I needed 
to find a different position because uh, working for family um, a lot of times can be very difficult. And so when I started thinking about what I wanted to do, I had done, like I said, I had been in healthcare. I had done that. Um, I had done massage therapy. I had um, done a lot of things that didn't really fulfill me in the way that I wanted to be fulfilled. And I had loved when I was younger doing things um, on Microsoft Word, like creating um, poster art on Microsoft Word because I had no idea what Adobe was or the power that it could have or any of that type of stuff or the other programs. And um, I loved creating scrapbooks, both physically and then when you could start doing them online and having photo books printed and stuff like that. I just, I loved designing things and I was very interested in photography and doing all that kind of stuff. So I really decided that I wanted to pursue, if I was going to go back to school, um, I was going to pursue something that I loved. Um, I had never been, a uh, a valedictorian or anywhere close to that when I was in high school. I would say coming out and doing uh, the career that I chose now um, was just constantly pursuing the things that made me happiest. I can't draw, so I always knew that I needed to do things in layouts, which lent itself to things like brochures, newspapers, magazines, um, business cards, all those types of, of things that don't necessarily require uh, graphic artistry. It took me a while to pursue to get into the magazine world. And then um, the pandemic hit. I was put on furlough from the job that I did have in the magazine industry. And I wound up deciding to publish a food magazine, a bi-monthly food magazine, because I didn't want to sit around. And uh, I eventually, due to personal reasons, resigned uh, while still on furlough. Um, and so my hobby became my job, my career overnight. And um, so as I developed, as I realized how much I loved publishing, as I developed my business, that's how Locala came about. So I started publishing in 2020 and um, Locala actually started publishing in 2021. Carefully. I balance carefully. Um, I'm not always successful. I do get burned out Um, And if I'm not careful, uh, one of the biggest things that helped with balancing was the fact that I moved the office, my office out into another office, out of the house into another office, uh, because I'm someone that wakes up very early and I would uh, start work at 4 a.m. and work until 4 p.m. or later. Um, I wouldn't get up much. I wouldn't uh, go and uh do things around the house much. Um, the dogs were basically the only thing that would get me up uh, to let them out during the day. And when I'm working at an office, I find it much easier to um, structure my day and make sure I'm leaving work mostly at work. It doesn't mean I don't still do things at home, but um, I only have a laptop at home, and so it's very limited to, as to what I can do at home and my primary computer is here. And then it also means that I don't need to take phone calls once I'm home for the day. I can separate that. The other thing is, is that um, I am very introverted. So it's very important for me to have time alone and to be at home. So it's very rare that I go out because I want to. It's very rare for me to actually uh, engage in in social activities that aren't work related. Um, And so I need to recharge. And a lot of times I I struggle with doing things that's work related. Once I'm there, I'm typically okay. Um, But I usually I find that I have an internal clock that no matter what it is, um, two hours and I find myself ready to go. So, um, and, and some social situations, one hour I'm ready to go, but usually that internal clock, if it's a longer social engagement will hit two hours and I'm like, okay, I'm ready to leave right now. And I try to respect that as much as I can. Sometimes you can't depending on the social engagement, but, um, I even do that when I'm visiting family. I I tend to have that internal clock is telling me, okay, it's been two hours. I'm heading home because I need that recharge time. 
and uh, I, I am luckily um, with a significant other who is very much the same as me. So we just stay at home with our two dogs and I will totally cuddle under my heated blanket right now because it is freezing in Ocala. And that would be what, that's what I would rather be doing on a Saturday night than going out and having dinner somewhere or anything else. At the forefront of my mind um, is my uncle because he recently passed away in December of 2022. So he's right at the forefront of my mind as someone that impacted me. I believe I was impacted by a lot of people over over my life for different reasons and at different points in my life um, and for those seasons. But my uncle, over the last few years, um, we started getting a lot closer. I, I would write a lot of letters and um, he would give me a call back. That was kind of our thing. I'd send a letter, he would call in response because he said he didn't write letters, <laughs> but he loved receiving letters. And uh, he was kind of a giant in the corporate world. So when I was younger, I was very intimidated by him. And then it was also a little bit um, taboo to talk to him about work at that point, because he was working so much that when he was with visiting family, it was very much just family time and uh, leave work at work. So I didn't get to ask him a whole lot, but um, he had worked his way up. He was very inspiring. He only had a high school diploma and he worked his way up in retail. He became the chief operating officer of William Sonoma. I want to say for about 15 years, um, he held that position and then he retired and then Hallmark, um, pursued him and got him to come out of retirement. And, and I believe his position there was president of retail. And I believe he was there for about five years, if I remember correctly. So his knowledge of business was, extensive. And we'd be having conversations. And especially when I started my own businesses, um, you know, he'd be like, do you mind if I give you some unsolicited advice? And my answer was always yes, please. Because I knew that even though he had been retired for a number of years, um, the type of information that he was giving me was evergreen. He loved to mentor. Um, he loved to make sure that everybody was taken care of and liked to come to work. Um, and, you know, so, so his and I's relationship, uh, that had a big impact on, on how I, maneuver in my business. Well, thank you guys so much for joining in on this episode of the Locala podcast. And we will be back with more guests. Um, we're going to be doing some vlogs like this from now, from time to time as well. And I hope you enjoy them and uh, know that I'm going to get better at them as we go along. I am very nervous just talking about um, about myself as well as just to a camera. Um, so I appreciate you guys as I go through these learning curves and we're going to be just adding more and more content to Locala and I'm looking forward to it. So thank you for joining us here at the Locala podcast where we focus on connections through stories. Once again, thank you for joining us here on the Locala podcast. If you enjoyed today's video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up as well as subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you're alerted to our next videos. Speaking of our other videos, I think you'd really enjoy this one here.